Today we're reviewing and learning how to play 5-Minute Dungeon. I'm Mark Maya. Welcome to Board Game Coffee. If you're a returning viewer or new to our channel, feel free to subscribe below and stay up to date with our weekly videos. If you're already a subscriber, thank you and welcome back. Now, back to our review and our how to play. 5-Minute Dungeon is a fast-paced cooperative card game about matching symbols to overcome obstacles and monsters. We're going to try something a little different today. Since 5-Minute Dungeon is such an easy game to teach, I'm going to throw in a quick how to play in this review video. If you want to skip the how to play section of this video, just click the link below and we'll take you right to the review. Alrighty, here we go. Basically, gameplay goes a little something like this. First, each player selects a character they wish to play with and the deck of cards that matches that character's color. Then place the dungeon boss that you want to take on in the center of the table. Randomly select door cards equal to the number printed on the bottom of the boss mat. Add two challenge cards for each player sitting at the table. For example, in a three-player game, you would randomly pull out six challenge cards. Now, take your door cards and your challenge cards and shuffle them together. Then place them here on the boss mat. And lastly, each player draws an opening hand according to the number of players at the table. See chart here. And that's your setup. Now, as soon as you play a card, draw a card right away, but only to the max of your starting hand size. There are special abilities that will allow you to draw more cards, and these abilities might put you over your starting hand size. In which case, unless another card tells you to do so, do not draw cards until you drop below your starting hand size. Now they're all set up, it's time to play. Set your 5 minute timer, and flip a card off the stack of doors sitting on the boss mat. Then all players race to play all the symbols on those cards. It doesn't matter who plays the cards, as long as you have the whole set. So, the cards can all come from one player, or all players can pitch in. Once all the symbols are matched, the monster, person, or obstacle, whatever was behind the door, is considered defeated. All the cards used to defeat it, along with the door itself, are swept away. And another door is put in its place. Then simply repeat this process until you reach the dungeon boss and defeat it before the time runs out. Remember, you only got five minutes, so you better be quick. The boss monster symbols will appear on their mat once you've cleared out all the door cards in the dungeon. Match those symbols exactly and you win, assuming you still got time on the clock. The only difference between a boss monster and other cards is when you place symbols toward defeating the doors, be it the wrong symbol or simply more symbols than you need, those cards are lost for the rest of the game. So once your deck runs out, you're pretty much out of the fight. Unless someone has the ability to get you more cards. So don't throw your cards away recklessly before you reach the boss, because you won't be getting them back. The only time you discard cards to your character's discard pile is when you use their special abilities, listed here at the bottom of the card. But more on that later. Now, where was I? Oh, right. As I was saying, cards played on a monster or any other challenge you face in the dungeon are lost. But against the boss, you're only allowed to play the exact symbols listed on their mat. Any wrong symbols or excess copies of a particular symbol are returned to the player's hand. This prevents players from just tossing in all their cards at the end without thinking about it and claiming victory. That little stipulation about matching the exact symbols on a boss mat makes a big difference. It makes the dungeon boss feel a lot more formidable than all the little minions you fought along the way. Because by the time you reach the boss, you won't have much time left and panic will start to set in, causing you to play the wrong cards or worse, freezing up and not playing anything at all. It happens to the best of us. And that brings us to the timer. Being that this is 5 minute dungeon, you're going to need something to count down those precious few minutes. So the 5 minute dungeon guys put together a little app to help you do just that. And it's free! 
Before you begin your game, start up that timer, flip that first card, and start matching symbols as fast as you can. And unlike our earlier walkthrough, things can get a little crazy and panicky when the timer gets involved. So your PlayStation might look a little something like this. <laughs> Now, another cool thing about this timer, it has a narrator. Actually, it has a few narrators to choose from, each with their own unique voice and personality. All the voices are well performed and the narration never distracts from the action, which is key. The timer is a nice little addition designed to be simple and easy to use. Other than throwing down matching symbols to defeat monsters, people, obstacles, whatever you find in the dungeon, you'll also come across event cards. Events are comprised of quirky little things that the players have to do in order to continue. And instead of matching symbols, events require players to do things like... Everyone gives their cards to one player. Or... All players discard their cards. Event cards are neat and add a little something extra to your game. Although, you do tend to lose precious seconds off the clock when you first encounter them. But, once you get used to recognizing the cards on sight, you'll learn to react to them faster. As you've probably guessed by the title, 5 Minute Dungeon is a short game. And 5 minutes is just enough time to run through a dungeon and defeat its final boss. But you gotta be quick. There are 7 dungeons to choose from. And you can play whichever one you want, order doesn't matter. Although the higher number ones do get more difficult. And if you want to play them back to back, Knock yourself out. But that's more of a 35 minute dungeon. There are multiple character cards to choose from. Each has its own deck, and each has a variant version on the other side of its mat. And, as I mentioned earlier, each character has their own special ability listed on the bottom of the card, on both sides. That can be played at any time by simply taking three cards from your hand and tossing them into the discard pile. Character abilities consist of things like draw more cards, kill that monster, pause time, etc. These abilities are crucial to your victory. So I recommend discussing with the players around the table and decide as a group which ability each player should take on and figure out which combinations will help you best get through the dungeon. And communication is key, so you better talk fast and listen faster. So don't be afraid to yell at your friends or loved ones. Okay, I got a card that'll kill the next monster that shows up. Nobody play anything. What did I just say? Five Minute Dungeon is a great game for non-gamers and young gamers alike, because it's easy to learn and easier to teach. Match the symbols on the card. That's pretty much all you need to know. And the setup, as you saw in the earlier part of this video, is pretty simple. So it's a great game to pull out when you need that quick gaming fix. Now, I've also mentioned this in previous videos, but I do prefer bigger, more complex games. And I still do. But 5 Minute Dungeon doesn't scratch that itch. That's not what it's there for. It fills a different niche for me. It's the game I pull out between the bigger games, and at the end of the night. Or simply when I don't have time for a bigger game. Sounds like a filler game, right? And for me it is, and there's nothing wrong with that. But the term filler game has certain negative connotations that come with it. But I don't see it that way. When I hear filler game, it tells me instantly that the game is easy to learn, not overly complex, plays in quick sessions, and in most cases, tends to be family friendly. And that all sounds great to me, because sometimes that's exactly what I'm looking for. Saying a game is a filler game doesn't mean it's not fun. It doesn't mean you're not going to enjoy playing it, and it definitely doesn't mean that you should think less of it. Now, one thing about 5 Minute Dungeon that actually turned me off of it at first, and might be turning some of you off as well, is the timer. I hate timed games. I don't like being rushed. I like thinking through problems at my own pace without a timer nipping at my heels. So when I came across this game and read the title, I was like, oh, it's one of those timed games. Eat. But I had nothing else to do with the time, so I thought, what the hell, let's give it a go. And you know what? I liked it. It was a timed game, and I liked it. And I think the reason that I liked it is because it really has no problems that I need to think through. I just need to react to what I'm shown. And that works for me. And if you're the kind of person like me that hates timers, this might be the right timer game for you. And just to clarify, games that measure time in turns, rounds, phases, or actions 
I am absolutely okay with. It's the countdown timers I don't like. Well, except this one. Another thing I like about 5 Minute Dungeon is the cards. More specifically, the illustration on the cards. Their playful, kooky cartoon style really sets the theme for the lighthearted nature of the game. And it's complemented nicely by the great voice acting on the timer. And the Kickstarter also came with this little sculpture. And as far as I can tell, it serves no purpose other than being a cool little thing to keep on your desk, which I am totally okay with. To compare 5 Minute Dungeon to bigger games like Rising Sun or City of Kings isn't really fair, since they both fulfill a different need. I've heard the term beer and pretzel games used to describe smaller games like 5 Minute Dungeon, which paints a picture in your mind of the type of game you pull out to play with your friends or a few beers and pretzels, which I've actually never had before. I get it! And as I mentioned before, it fills that niche that bigger games can't. Or not as well. Because sometimes you just need something that's fun and not overly thinky. And that's 5 Minute Dungeon's sweet spot. And since a game only runs you about 5 minutes, you can put your drink down between plays and won't even get warm. Okay, so let's wrap it up. 5 Minute Dungeon is easy to learn, fun to play, and family friendly. So if you're looking for a game that fits that criteria and you don't have an aversion to filler games, I'd seriously encourage you to give 5 Minute Dungeon a try. If you like this video, we got more. If you want to see them every week, subscribe here. But if you want to see more videos right now, click here. And if that's not enough, check out our Board Game Coffee Instagram account for new pictures updated daily. I'm Mark Maya, this is Board Game Coffee, and remember, have fun, keep gaming, be social. See you next week.